Hi everyone, I don't know about you, but I am pretty excited that spring is coming in just a few more weeks. So I'm starting to get ready for the 2021 growing season and I can't wait to share that with you. I want you to come along with me as we get started. And today I wanna to talk to you about getting my uh, seed starting soil ready, the tools that we're gonna need, and I'm gonna start planting some of the seeds so that I can get ahead of the game. So we'll talk more about that See you inside. Hi friends, welcome to Homemade and Homegrown. If you're new to this channel, my name is Tammy Sousa and I'm delighted that you've decided to join me um, here at Homemade and Homegrown. We learn together uh, how to grow our own food, raise our own chickens, uh, whether that's for eggs or meat, um, as well as we learn how to cook and can preserve our foods for a more self-sustaining lifestyle. So last year I started this journey and I've been loving every minute of it and I just decided I wanted to share the journey with all of you. So like I said at the opening, I wanted to uh, talk to you about the new growing season and preparing our seed starting soil, um, the tools that we're gonna need, uh, things like that. And there are some seeds that I'm gonna plant today so that I can get ahead of the game when the time comes to get them into the ground. I'm most likely going to start on uh, my broccoli, my cauliflower, and actually my peppers too. Um, there's some vegetables that in my grow season, my grow area, they need to start many weeks early, um, some eight to 10 weeks earlier than, than the ones that I can seed in the ground, so. <clears throat> we're going to talk about that and uh, one thing is that I've learned about my seed starting soil uh, is when I used to plant before I would just grab any soil that was uh, on sale wherever that was and I wouldn't think nothing of it I would think it soil is soil and you know anything can grow well sure I would get the little sprouts coming up and uh, but then they would die and I could never understand. All I was doing is uh, putting these the soil in the container, uh, put the seed in, and I kept it watered, uh, just enough water so that I wasn't water logging it or anything like that, over watering it. And but it would it would sprout up, and I'd think, yes, here it comes, and then all of a sudden it would just die. So, in my journey, what I've been learning especially through YouTube, other fellow YouTube uh, people that are out there sharing their, their uh, expertise, um, is how to prepare the soil, uh, what to do for certain soils, and when to change the soil when you're up potting, and then when to start fertilizing the seeds. Well, if you're starting your soil, if you're taking soil from outside and you're starting some of your some of your seeds inside, um, you're bringing in things, disease uh, that can that can really hinder the growth of your new plants. So, with that in mind, there's a trick that people uh, people do. Uh, first, you have to get the seed starting soil. Now, let me get the one that I've just purchased. Okay, so this is the product that I purchased, Pro Mix. It's a Canadian product, so. Um, we're Canadian and I tend to try and keep uh, purchasing from Canadian pro, uh, can Canadian companies. But anyway, that's besides the point. Premium organic seed starting mix. Uh, this is what I'm starting with. But another thing that I did learn about seed starting mix is that as long as your soil is really light and fluffy, so you don't necessarily have to purchase a seed starting mix. You can start out with peat moss and vermiculite. Vermiculite is something that's going to add, uh, let me see here. Okay, so the thing with vermiculite here, uh, it helps uh, the soil. It increases the aeration and the drainage, which helps root development. It also helps maintain soil moisture for less watering. Vermiculite is recommended as a starting medium for root, rooting and germination. And so it says on the back of the bag. So aeration and 
it just really helps with the drainage. Peat moss holds moisture, so you don't have to really um, water it as much. So, but when I used to just get soil before, that's what I used to do. I would buy a bag of uh, potting soil or whatever, and then I would buy a bag of uh, manure and another bag of peat moss. And I would mix that all together and I was thinking I was doing great and creating, you know, a pretty good base, a pretty good starter for my, for my plants. And let me bring it up here. And it turns out that it was just too much for the little seedlings to start in. Um, so when we purchase also plants from the nursery, from the garden center, they have they have uh, been doing it just like that. They just put their seeds in a seed starting mix, and or in a peat moss mix, you know, with with the vermiculite. And if you're not an avid gardener and know what we're doing, which, like I said, I thought I knew what I was doing, but I, according to all the videos that I've been seeing online, I really didn't. I. I I didn't know what I was doing. We get these plants home, we put them right in the ground right away. Well, some of the plants, especially the, the new seedlings that we buy from, from the store, uh, they may have been under a grow light or in a greenhouse condition where they're not um, exposed to the elements, the outside elements, wind and direct sunlight, things like that. And so anyway, what I would, I would put my plant right in the ground and I would be so excited thinking that, you know, my tomatoes or mostly it was tomatoes that I would grow and I couldn't wait for um, that growth to start happening. I would see it dying off and I couldn't understand because like I said, I thought I was doing everything correctly. And uh, I'm sure you could probably relate too if you've ever tried to grow a tomato plant and wonder why some survive and some don't. Okay, so what we're gonna do to get started for the seed starting um, mix is that we have to sterilize the mix. Um, the reason why we do that is because no matter what product you buy, um, there is a possibility of having fungus net bugs and eggs and things like that, and that creates the fungus. Um, sometimes what I've noticed too is when I was making my soil before, um, there would be a, some type of a fungus on top. So now that I know what that is, and it came within the product that I purchased, so what we're gonna do is we're going to put this in a container and then we're going to sterilize it with hot boiling water. And we'll do that right now. Okay, we're gonna get started. So this is the process of sterilizing your soil. Put it in this container. Now, apparently these mites can really take a good freezing. So if the product has been sitting outside, which most, most of them are, they're sitting outside on a pallet. By the time we get it, it's spring and thawed. Okay, I'm just breaking it up again, breaking it up there. So inside your soil, most of this, there's nothing nutritional uh, that's in this at all for the seeds. The seeds don't need it yet. They don't need uh, fertilizer or anything like that in the first couple of weeks of their life. So uh, this is mostly um, peat moss and the white is the vermiculite. Okay, so when you're just doing a small garden, maybe a couple bags will do you, but because I'm gonna be doing a fair size uh, and a fair amount of planting, I'm going to buy the big, the big bag of, of peat moss and a couple bags of vermiculite and cre create my own, and it's gonna be a, a whole lot cheaper when I do it like that. Okay, so we put two bags that were 1.4 kilograms, which is like nine liters. Okay, and I'm gonna put a full pot of boiling water here. Okay. And we're gonna mix that up. <laughs> it 
toss it like a salad. <laughs> okay, so I'm one that likes to get her hands right in the dirt, so that's what I'm going to do. It is fairly warm, but that's okay. I can handle it. If you can't, maybe put some garden gloves on. But I like to get my hands into the dirt and really mix that up. If there is any eggs or anything like that that could be here, we are now killing them. Okay. So we're going to pack that down a little bit. And I'm going to put a piece of plastic over top just to keep some of that heat in there for a minute. Let steam. Okay, and we'll just let that sit for a few minutes. Okay, so while we're waiting for that to sterilize, I'm going to talk to you about some of the things that you can use to get yourself started. Um, some people will use things like egg cartons. Egg cartons are good. The only thing is, is because they, they really absorb the water. Um, so you gotta make sure that you're on top of the, the watering. Okay, so I just usually take the top off, use that as my tray, okay? Put it in there and then you can fill that up with soil and there's your little starting starting pot. Um, other things that you can use are, these make great little um, greenhouse type planters, planting. Oops. <laughs> um, because, you know, this is the perfect little size to start, you know, like a tomato. And then you've got the dome so you can close it just like that. So you can keep, I just got, this was an old tomato one. So you can get these, keep those, and um, they make great starters too. Um, another thing that I will be doing when I pot up, or some seeds that I'm gonna just start right in, in these ones so that I don't have to transplant and have to move it as often um, so that I don't stress the plant out, um, is the red solo cups. So I just went to the dollar store and grabbed a pack of 50. Just make sure that you drill a hole at the bottom so that there's some drainage going on. And uh, what, I, what I also purchased for this was the tin foil pans that you can get for when you're make, like doing a roast or a turkey or something. And that's gonna be your, your water collector. Um, another rule of thumb too though is when you are watering, your soil, make sure that you bottom water, not top water. Uh, the roots will, it, it'll force the roots to come down and go for the water and drink it from there instead of up, up at the top. Um, also at the dollar store, they had these cool little uh, plastic reusables. So, you know, I, I've got a bunch of these, so I'll be reusing those. Another tool that you could be using also, I found at the dollar store, was a pack of uh, a pack of ten of the taller. These are um, three, well, three and a half inch by three and a half inch by four inch high. So these are great for germinating seed starters, and also the same thing. You could use the tin foil pans that you get at the grocery store or dollar store or wherever, and use them as your as your tray, your bottom tray, to collect the water. Um, also, there's these types of uh, pots that are also similar to your egg carton. And these, again, they absorb the water, so you gotta keep an eye on, on the water. But they're just cardboard, and these are, what size are these? Um, diameter is 10 and a half centimeters. So four, four and a quarter inches wide round. But what I did this year is I wanted to make sure that I started out the right way. So I watched a lot of videos about how to seed start 
your, your plants. I went ahead and I went on Amazon and I bought the seed starting trays. And then I also bought the, so there's the tray, your pods. And then I went ahead and bought the, the actual tray to hold them. It's got no holes in them. Some come with holes and some, so I got the ones without and the cover to go with it. Just put it inside. There we go. And then, yeah, so I did that. You don't have to go that far. That's why I showed the other alternative ways, cups and egg cartons and things like that. Um, one thing I was I saw on um, on another page was she had this really cool sprayer. And now I, I did, I do have this, I've, I've had this for a while, and, but it's just so much easier. I, I just fell, fell in love with this. So this is an actual sprayer, water sprayer, and you pump it and it creates the air that you need. I'm not gonna spray it right now, but then I just push down here on the handle and it lightly sprays out the, out the end here. So I'm really excited. Okay, so let's see how the soil is doing. Take the plastic off. So this is fairly moist. I'm just gonna break that up there. The good thing about pre-moistening your, your soil too, is that if you do it when, like if you put your your soil in the in the container and then you put the seed in i don't know if you've experienced it i'm sure you have but the um when you put the water in it start like it floats at the top and it takes a while to whoops sorry that's my dog tika um it takes a, a little while for the for the soil to absorb that water and then it moves your seed and so you might as well just pre-moisten your your soil and then that way you won't have that problem you just okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get these uh, all filled up okay so I've got and then I also went ahead and put some of these in the tray I thought for sure well four would fit but as soon as I went to try and put the lid on it uh, it wouldn't close properly so I took out, oops, I took out uh, two of the tr two of the pots, and now I can close it. So I'm not sure why, but whatever. We're gonna roll with it. So we're gonna start out actually with the these ones here first, and I have to decide exactly what's gonna go in in each of these trays. So uh, you'll be helping me decide that. <laughs> Okay, so we're filling these up, and you don't want to pack them down. You just want to have it loosely, uh, the first little bit. Um, but you don't want, whoops, you don't want any holes either. So you want to just take your thumb and kind of gently put, pack it in there, but not tight. So just, just lightly, okay? Just, just enough to make sure that the bottom is filled. Alright, keep going. Don't you just love gardening and getting your hands in the dirt? <laughs> I do. Some people would rather wear gloves, but not me. I want to feel the dirt. Oop. See, it's because it's getting a little heavy there because of the soil. So remember, you don't need to have all the stuff that I have here, especially if you're not gonna have a huge garden or anything. Just go to your dollar store and pick up a few pots and and like I said, the, you know those tin foil trays they work great uh, as well for to catch the water and water your your seedlings that way. Okay, so they're not completely filled, which that's okay because we want to leave room for when we put the uh, soil on top. So I'm going to leave the, the bottom tray in here to give me some more support. And 
some may think I'm getting started too early, but um, from my experience last year and the short growing season that we have, I know that the, um, the vegetables that I had growing could have used a few more weeks of growth. Um, there were some people that were having great success with their broccoli and cauliflower and things like that and where I wasn't. I had a ton of leaves, but I wasn't getting, I wasn't getting the, uh, the fruit, the actual broccoli itself. And um, I think it was planted too late as well. I just didn't have enough time to grow, I don't think. Things like broccoli and cauliflower, they, they like a cool soil. They do like direct sunlight, but they, they uh, definitely, definitely like a cool type soil. So planting them early in my area is going to be vital for the success of that. I believe my zone is f five. I'm in, I'm in New Brunswick, Canada. It gets started the end of May, first week of June. And then everything we have, or everything grows until, well, our last frost date is usually around, or our first, first one, I should say, the fall frost date is like October. So that's not very long to grow. And a lot of your, if you look on the back of your packet of seeds, it'll tell you how long from seed to harvest it takes to grow. And most are a minimum, <clears throat> excuse me, a minimum of um, you know, 65 to 85 days, 90 days. Some need 100 days, dust that off. So yeah, like I said, so we we technically we've only got from June to October to 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 grow anything. We got to take advantage of starting seeds inside. So I'll finish this. I got another tray to do, and I'll finish that, and we'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Now that we've got the pots all filled up, we're going to now decide what's going in where. Okay, I gotta be careful with this. So there's 72 in each one. So I do want a lot of broccoli and cauliflower planted. So I think I'm gonna try one tray of broccoli, one tray of cauliflower, and I need a lot of peppers too. So I'm gonna do probably a full tray of peppers and I'm gonna figure out which ones for this one. And then I'm going to do 18 tomato plants. So, but I'm going to still, I'm going to add like two or three seeds per pot. And we'll see which one's the strongest one out of those. And then we'll, we'll probably um, prune off the ones that aren't, that aren't as strong. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so that sunlight is really coming in. <laughs> um, hopefully you can see, should be okay. So I'm going to start out with the tomatoes. Now I've got a few different tomatoes I'm going to be planting, but these particular ones, I'm going to make sure that I do my San Marzanos right here. They're a paste, what they call a paste tomato, and they make great sauces. Um, same with the Romas. Romas also are great. And then I also got a, a tomato, Scotia tomato, and that's a slicer. This is a great uh, tomato. Um, it's a dwarf determinant heirloom tomato. It's uh, actually grown in Nova Scotia, and uh, so it's pretty dependable and sturdy for our weather. And they turn a really bright shade of red um, with some green on, on the, like the shoulder parts of, of the tomato. And the thing is, I, what I like too is that it's, it's a no fuss type tomato. But let's get the San Marzanos planted in here. That's staple out of there. Now she can open. So there's uh, about 25 seeds in here. So they're quite small. Okay. Sorry, that's sun. Hmm. I think I'm gonna do two per pot. Yeah, I don't wanna waste seeds either, especially this particular one. <laughs> so 
So I'll just put the two in and see what happens. I won't feel so bad if, if I only have to prune off one. Did I put two in there? One, two, yeah, okay, two. So I'm going to be probably about two weeks ahead before I have to put them in the ground, which isn't all that bad, but my goal is to make sure that I have some strong plants going in. That was two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, four, five. 25 seeds on the nose. More San Marzanos. I got these at my uh, co-op. So we'll see the quality of the seeds that I got from Canadian Girl in Halifax with these ones. And then this tray over here, I'll turn you around. This tray right here, I'll know. I'll make sure I'll mark it that this is from the garden center. Yeah, when I plant the other ones, my other tomatoes, that's when I'm gonna plant the romas. Okay, next, we'll now add, top these, cover these seeds a little bit more with some soil. So I'm just gonna lightly cover the actual seed. And don't pack it in, I'm just tapping it. Oh, also, there was, in the fall of last year, I had a really strong pepper plant. And for some of you that don't know, last year I had a heck of a time growing peppers. And like I said, I think it was just that they didn't have enough grow time, and uh, it was just too hot, I think, for them. But there was a lot of greenage. But anyway, I decided to take one of them in inside and see if I could care for her over the winter. So I transferred it into a pot. I'll show you here in a second. Changed the soil. Took the soil that it, because it was the outside soil. Took that out and put it in the pot. Well, just now, just recently, I just happened to notice we've got some new growth happening. What I did was I took the, the potting soil and then I gave it some uh, fish emulsion, yeah, I'll show you, fertilizer. I don't know if you can see that. Fish fertilizer and uh, just, a, I think it was like a quarter cup and I diluted in some water and then I fed the plant. Well, check this out. I just noticed today actually that I've got some new growth happening right here and some new ones in between the old the old leaves. I pruned off the top. We've got a new growth here, but these are all going to be new shoots. So I think I might have recovered it. And we'll see how it goes. <laughs> but it was a nice surprise to wake up to this morning. And they're under my grow light here that Joe built me. So I get everything planted and then I'll bring down the light. So another thing that I have discovered is that when we put our pot, say, in a windowsill, um, we can tend to get those new plants that have come up uh, a little, I guess, well, they look really weak and thin, and they're reaching for the light. Um, we don't want that because we want a nice, strong root structure first and a nice, strong stem at the beginning. No matter what, no matter what you're planting, so I'll have to bring down the grow light to probably five inches above the trays, so that they're not struggling to get at the light. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to mark these, Halifax girl, and these were bought at the co-op store. We'll see which ones did better. Moving on to the next one is broccoli okay so this tray is going to be broccoli now i've got two different kinds of broccoli um, i've never grown these two so this one here is called green sprouting calabrese i believe um, i don't know much about it so we'll see what they're like and then so i'm going to do half of those and then the other half of the tray, we're going to do Waltham, I think it's called, 29. Okay, looks like uh, fish food. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to finish doing that, and uh, I'll bring you back as soon as I get these done. Okay, we're going to move forward into this one here, Green Sprouting Calabrese. 
Again, like I said, a broccoli that I've never grown. I don't feel so uh, alone in my area. People have commented on my Facebook page. They don't have a lot of success with, with growing broccoli. Okay, so I'll mark these as well. The other one is green sprouting calabrese. Sorry if the sun is blinding you, because it's definitely blinding me. Okay, so let's do cauliflower. I bought this cauliflower and that broccoli uh, two years ago, so hopefully the seeds are still good. They weren't open, they were sealed nicely. So this one's called Snowball Self Blanching. And then the new ones that I got, I got two early, early snowballs is what they're called. So this is from the Grow Center, the co-op, and this is from somebody in Alberta uh, with this one. Because these are older, I'm going to start with these ones. I think they'll still be fairly fresh. And can I open it without scissors? Or how about my teeth? <laughs> nope. Gotta get scissors. Okay, so I'm gonna do this and fast track you. <laughs> so you don't have to be bored with watching me do this. And we'll be right back. Okay. Okay, and I'm gonna put that these were two year old seeds. I'm actually gonna try the, the one I got online from Alberta. Uh, they want in hummus rich soil mixed with composted manure. So I do have compost down at the garden, so I'll make sure that I really um, amend my soil. Oh, now these are blue. It, blue, like a purple blue. I wonder if that's a coating that she's put on them. Let's see if I can bring it down to that. Can you see that? Look at that. I've never seen them that color before. Okay, so we're going to fast track you again. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we'll be right back, okay? There's trays over there. Okay, this one here, I'm going to put peppers. So Joe wanted to grow some hot peppers too. So we're going to do that. Just for Joe. We've got cayenne, uh, long thick hot peppers. And we got early jalapeno peppers. And we have banana peppers. Also, I'll be putting some bell peppers in here. Got some golden California wonders. From my Canadian order, I did O Canada seeds and California wonder peppers as well. So we've got California wonder yellow, which claims to be 75 days of seed to, to harvest, which is ideal for me. And these ones, I'm not sure, but it does say that germination is seven to eight days. Start indoors in early March to first week of April. Transplant early June or later. Harden off before transplanting. Hardening off means that you are going from inside conditions, which um, are controlled, to the outside where it's going to be now subjected to the environment, the sun, the wind, and all that. So you want to gradually harden them off. So what that means is I'll be bringing the tray outside for a couple hours and then bringing it back inside and then do that for a couple days until it gets used to that and then I'll add on a couple more hours until I can actually put them in the greenhouse for um, maybe a week or two and then when the soil is prime at the proper temperature which is between um, 20 to 30 degrees Celsius uh, and then I can transplant them into my garden. I'll fast track you on that as well. Actually, I think I'm just gonna make this tray specifically for the hot peppers. 
Now this is going to be a new experience of growing hot peppers. I should have almost told Joe that he's the one that wants the hot peppers, so he should have been the one growing them. <laughs> I'm okay with a little bit of spice, but he don't mind the hot stuff. But he's Portuguese, so, and early jalapeno. Okay, and now we'll do the banana pepper. These are the ones I don't mind, and then I can pickle them. Also down at the greenhouse, or down at the garden, um, I've got raised beds, and last year we had made three, three of them. Yeah, three of them to be like a greenhouse. I had um, Joe and I, we went down. I can show you the footage actually of that. We went down to put the plastic back on the green or on the on the raised bed. Actually, I'll show that footage with you right now while I'm doing this. So I don't know if you can see, but I've got little hoops down there right in the middle. Mini greenhouses that I put on my raised beds. So what I'm going to do is Joe and I are going to go down, shovel some of that snow out of there, and then reattach the plastic that we had on them so that we can get those started because those are going to be the things that we're going to plant first, things like carrots and cabbage, um, broccoli and cauliflower, things like that are going to go in those, um, what I'm calling hoop houses in my raised beds. So that's what we're going to do. So we had an ice storm. It's all crusty. We gotta cut through it. Icicle. <laughs> All the way down. Haven't seen one like that in a long time. <laughs> Look at the icicle. Uh, <laughs> I better get over there and start helping them. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get one box finished and I'll uh, fast forward that <laughs> so you know, I'm not boring you with the details. And uh, I got tired real easy. <laughs> Okay, so I went ahead and planted the bell peppers, so the California Wonder peppers and the golden yellows. Okay, so now the only thing left to do is to lower the grow light, so I'll do that. That'll be about five inches from the, from the top here, and we'll just wait to see what happens. So we'll see you, um, well actually I'll do um, an update video. How about a, let's see what, a week looks like first okay so yeah so we'll, we'll try a week and see what happens or what it looks like oh also I had uh, taken the onion roots the green onions and I cut the roots of them off when I was cooking and I decided to plant them in this pot that my sister gave me and they have come up so 
that was pretty neat. So I've got some fresh green onion growing right here by the grow light. So that's, that's awesome. Uh, you should try that. So that's it for now. Um, I want to thank you for joining me today and uh, getting dirty in the soil. I just, I love that. So I, I'm so excited that, that spring is coming and it's just around the corner a few more weeks of uh, looking at the snow and um, we'll be getting our hands dirty in the garden in no time. So thanks again for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. I'd love to uh, get your support. And um, don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you won't miss another video that I post. And um, leave your comments below. I'd love to hear your, your, um, your tips and tricks as well. So this is my first year with starting them inside and doing a grow light. And uh, yeah, so this is going to be quite the journey this year. And I hope that you come along with me. So thanks for visiting me. Have a wonderful week. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. God bless.